This is the home of Carl von Linné, the Swedish botanist who invented modern taxonomy, that is the way we name organisms. When he lived here some 250 years ago, agriculture was very different. Humans, or Homo sapiens, as Linné named our species, did not have much impact on biodiversity. But today, modern agriculture, forestry and ranching is efficient, it's mechanized and it's giving high yields. But what is it doing to the wildlife, plants and insects? The world is losing species at an alarming rate and the transformation of forests and wild areas into farmlands is pushing wildlife into steep decline. This is the research area of this year's Volvo Environment Prize laureate, Claire Kremen. And she has a solution of how to keep feeding the planet while preserving wildlife. We need to get rid of monoculture style of farming and manage our working lands for biodiversity. We simply wouldn't survive without biodiversity. It's responsible for the air that we breathe, for cleaning up our water, for the food that we eat, all of these things. Traditionally protected areas such as reserves and national parks have been the cornerstones of biodiversity conservation. Absolutely, there are many species that we're only going to be able to protect in that manner. But right now, across the world, we have about 15% of the world's surface that's protected and so much is left outside. The lands where humans are farming, doing forestry and ranching, make up between 60 to 70% of the terrestrial Earth's surface. These so-called working lands are often managed in a way detrimental to wild plants, animals and insects. With very large-scale agriculture, we're simplifying the landscapes a lot. It makes them much less habitable for most species. Today's industrialized agricultural systems are not efficient at all. They're producing many environmental externalities. They are paying people less than a living wage, which pushes the social services cost onto the public. And they've contributed to public health disaster in the form of diet-related diseases. So if you think about all of those costs, it's not efficient at all. According to a recent report by the conservation group WWF, the wildlife population has fallen by more than two-thirds in less than 50 years. They recorded an average 68% fall in more than 20,000 species of mammals, birds, amphibians, reptiles and fish since 1970. Less known is the decline of insects. Claire Kremen is an expert on wild bees and says she's concerned about the insects' declines. I think it's very serious. Insects are the little things that run the world. Pollinators are critical for our own survival. They provide us with a third of the food that we eat. They improve the production of 75% of crop species, including some that we particularly enjoy, like chocolate and coffee, but also those that are critical for providing us with essential vitamins, like A, C, and E. So we really, really need these guys. Near Carl von Linnea's summer home, there is a branch of the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences where Professor Ricardo Bomarco, a research colleague to Claire Kremen, works with research on insects and crop protection. Insects is biodiversity. Half of all larger organisms are insects. They are doing much more than just pollinating. They decompose. They protect our crops against insects that want to eat them. So they are extremely important for many, many reasons. Without any bee visits, there is no harvest. Often, the farmers will rent honeybees and bring them out to the farm fields to supply that pollination service. But honeybees are actually not very effective at pollinating blueberry. Instead, the wild pollinators like bumblebees are extremely good at pollinating blueberry because they grasp the flower and shake it at a specific frequency that is just right for getting the pollen out. The problem is, is on huge fields like this one, there are not other resources for the bumblebees and other pollinators to support them. And another problem is that in these very large fields, they're often subject to pest outbreaks. It's a terrible problem for farmers. 
and farmers then have to spray pesticides over and over to control it. The good news, though, is that we can really reverse this trend. A way to do it is by transforming the working lands to make them more diverse. We would see the different crops growing within the same field, and then around that field we'd have different kinds of vegetation, like hedgerows, which line the field, shrubs and trees. We'd have pastures and small areas of native vegetation, like woodlots and small forests, borders along streams. I think that people would find them very attractive. Critics of this type of farming and the concept of agroecological landscapes say that they are much less productive, with smaller yields in a world where the human population is approaching 8 billion people. I would push back on that. Surprisingly, biodiversity-based farming can actually be as or more productive than conventional farming systems. It's about outputs over inputs. Many of today's assessments of agriculture are looking at just one kind of output, which is yield. So we need new models for how to feed the growing population. And here, biodiversity comes into play. We can work with biodiversity and instead of against it. Working in agriculture really opened my eyes to the problems in our food system, but also how we can solve them by farming with and for biodiversity. I wasn't surprised at all to hear that Claire Kremen was awarded the Volvo Environment Prize. I always loved animals as a child, and then studying biology it was my favorite subject. As an idealistic teenager, I wanted to somehow contribute to solving the world food hunger crisis. And an advisor suggested that I focus on fundamentals so I studied ecology, evolution, and developmental biology as an undergraduate and then for my PhD. But by the end of my PhD, I had become very concerned about the loss of rainforests. And I decided to switch to become a tropical conservation biologist. I got this fantastic opportunity to go to Madagascar and to work with Malagasy people in establishing a number of new protected areas. Very exciting work. We worked at the same field site, but we worked in the opposite season. So when I would arrive, she would have just departed, and we worked with the same field crew. So my job was to live up to her reputation as a project manager, <laughs> because they would often remark, you know, well, Claire does it like this, and it works very well like that. So I knew of Claire for several years by reputation. She's a superstar, incredibly curious. I think that she's also incredibly kind for someone of that ambition. I think her secret is time management. <laughs> I think she's very smart with her time. And she's very clever. When you're with Claire, you don't feel that you're with a big professor. She's very open, she's very engaging. I would describe Claire as actually quite a serious person. No mission is too big and she doesn't have any fear. She strives for excellence in like every part of it. Her research is amazing and what really was, I was struck by it is her ability to synthesize new information all the time. Claire is kind of a master to me, an example to follow, but also a source of inspiration and also a person to ask for opinion, especially when I'm in difficult situations. <laughs> Seven years ago, I got very interested in permaculture gardening, so I transformed my backyard. I did it because I wanted to walk the talk and see what it was like to grow your own food and do it with sustainable management techniques. And I have to say, it was so much fun. I really got excited about it. So I became a much better cook, and I'm really interested now in this farm-to-table kind of cooking. Her lighter side is not like a funny, hysterical side. Her lighter side is a graceful side, her physicality, which you might see in her karate. It's something where I'm so focused, everything else goes away. And it's a huge physical and mental challenge. I like challenges. I saw some videos on YouTube and I saw Claire fighting with two dudes and she was like flipping them over. 
She's not only amazing in science, but also outside science.